Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to uh, the Jerusalem Centre for Public Affairs Daily War Room broadcast. Um, today we're on a really critical day of the war. Obviously, we're talking about the war which started on the 7th of October with the massacre of 1,200 Israelis and, uh, um, and others and taking of 240 people hostage. Um, this sparked the war with the terrorist organizations in Gaza. Um, today, what we've been seeing um, is really a substantial change in the status of affairs. We have, for the last um, eight days almost, been in some type of a pause in the fighting in order to allow for the freeing of Israeli hostages that were being held by Hamas. Um, what we've seen over the last few days is the release of um, 50 Israelis um, that have been uh, let out day by day by day, just uh, um, um, either 13 or 12 um, every day in return for the release of um, Palestinian terrorists who were being held in Israeli prisons. And in addition to those um, uh, hostages being released, the Israelis, there have been an additional number of hostages who held foreign citizenship um, being released. Those included Thai citizens, who we understand, um, according to some reports, uh, were released after the Thai uh, authorities threatened Hamas, saying that if they don't release their citizens, they will execute the Hamas prisoners in the Thai prisons. Um, that is possibly uh, the way to move it forward. Um, and so today was meant to be another uh, part of that halt in, in, in the fighting, um, with every day Hamas releasing another 10 Israelis, live Israelis, in return for uh, um, an extra day of the continued pause in the fighting and the release of additional prisoners. Um, but already last night we were seeing some type of a, a, a maneuvering from Hamas um, saying that, well, we don't have so many prisoners that we're, uh, so many hostages that we're going to release. We're only going to release um, seven live hostages and three bodies. And then this morning they were, they upped it to another, uh, to eight live hostages and, and to two bodies. Um, really Hamas, as we've discussed previously in our briefings, playing that role of the manipulators um, really to the nth degree um, to make sure that they not only uh, uh, kill Israeli citizens, but also uh, um, really do impose their terror on all of the families of the hostages for as long as possible. Um, and we've seen that developing. And the question, obviously, in the way that being, what does that mean from the point of view of the Israeli government's uh, agreement to the pause in return for hostages? Does it mean that Hamas has now breached the terms of that agreement? Um, or do we continue on? So initially, we saw reports earlier this morning um, that Israel's government had said to Hamas, you have until seven o'clock in the morning to ensure that there is a list of 10 Israeli live hostages that meets the terms of the agreement, or else the pause in the, in the fighting is off. Um, by quarter to seven, that had changed slightly, saying that the pause would be extended considering the ongoing negotiations. And, uh, um, and that's really when things started to change as to how many hostages would actually, live hostages would be released. Um, and now we're just seeing in the last few hours more reports of two additional Russian uh, citizens who will be released. Hamas trying to play apparently that game that even the Russian citizens um, are part of the count of hostages to be released in order to continue on. Um, and within all of that, we saw this morning um, a terror attack being uh, uh, carried out at the entrance to Jerusalem to uh, uh, Israeli Arab terrorists who had previously been in prison for acts of terrorism and connected to Hamas um, came up to one of the uh, um, trampiadas, one of the, the, the tram stop bus stops at one of Jerusalem's entrances, um, got out of their cars and then with M16 started firing indiscriminately at, uh, at the civilians. Um, three Israelis were murdered um, and a number were injured. Um, so joining me for now, just to discuss those latest developments of both the hostages and the terrorist attack this morning is uh, um, JCPA fellow 
uh, and, and really Arab uh, um, affairs veteran Pinchas Imbari. And we will be later joined by uh, um, Admiral uh, uh, Maron, the former head of the, the, the IDF Navy, um, who, has, uh, uh, um, who will be joining us uh, uh, as, as soon as possible. Um, so Pinchas, give us an update, please, on what's going on on the side of Hamas. What does it mean from, uh, um, from both Hamas's point of view and from Israel's point of view about playing with the, the list of the hostages to be released? What does it mean with the, the, the terror attack this morning? Can we or should we differentiate between Hamas in Gaza and Hamas in Judea and Samaria slash Jerusalem carrying out these attacks? Should the attack this morning be considered and categorized as a breach of the terms of the pause in the fighting on both sides? Um, or is that just limited um, to the Gaza Strip? Yes, we have to differentiate because uh, Hamas in Gaza and Hamas in the West Bank are two different things. And we have to pay attention that in the ceasefire or the Hudna, in terms of Hamas, they did not include the West Bank or Judea and Samaria. Uh, uh, for them, uh, it's enough that Israel is stopping uh, attacking them in Gaza, and Israel uh, can continue and uh, operate against the Hamas cadres uh, uh, in Jenin and Hebron and elsewhere. So we see that uh, the focus uh, of Hamas Gaza is on Gaza, and uh, they don't care much uh, about uh, the West Bank. This is something that we have to pay attention to uh, because uh, I'm not sure that, uh, that Hamas in the West Bank, or even uh, in East Jerusalem, uh, are, are uh, tuned uh, to Gaza in terms of uh, getting uh, directives uh, or uh, being under the command uh, of that one or another one. Uh, but uh, what we saw in Jerusalem this morning, the very painful attack on our civilians, uh, is something very similar of what we saw in the past, that individuals, are uh, taken by emotions and decide uh, to go ahead and attack Jews. Uh, uh, so uh, I, don't, I, I, I don't connect the, what happened, the terror, the terror attack today in Jerusalem with the command in Gaza. It is something separate. I think that's a that's a, a quite a, a, an interesting dis a distinction, uh, Pinchas, to say that on the one hand, uh, um, Hamas can continue on carrying out terrorist attacks, even sending Israeli Arabs to to carry out uh, uh, terrorist attacks in uh, in Jerusalem, even um, and 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 say on the other hand, well, we're only committed to the ceasefire in uh, uh, um, in 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 the Gaza Strip. But on the other hand, what you raise is is definitely an interesting point that that even from Israel's point of view, um, the ceasefire only referred to the Gaza Strip and didn't include um, stopping or halting any type of activities to thwart terrorism and acts of terrorism in Judea and Samaria. And really, we have seen in the last, uh, uh, really in the last uh, uh, 55 days of the war, we've seen not a small amount of activity in Judea and Samaria, with some uh, uh, 2,400 people being arrested, they're terrorists, most of them being Hamas uh, 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 terrorists. So, so what you're saying is that this terror attack this morning shouldn't be considered by Israel as a breach of uh, um, the, the 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 halt in uh, uh, in the fighting, and Israel should just uh, um, uh, take that in its stride, almost as if it was just another attack coming from uh, Judea and Samaria. And vice versa, Israel is attacking Hamas in Jenin and in Hebron at the same time, even in intensifying the attacks on Hamas. So, uh, so uh, the West Bank and Jerusalem is not part of the agreement with Hamas. Hamas, uh, the, the, you know, the same as Hamas is very, is very, uh, how to say, upset that Iran is not involved and uh, Hezbollah is not involved. You may say that also Hamas in in uh, in the West Bank is upset why Gaza is not involved in our in our plight. Uh, what uh, they don't care about uh, us being uh, 
uh, attacked by the Israelis. So we see two separate arenas. Right, I, I, um, uh, thank you Pinchas for, for that uh, uh, important uh, um, addition. I don't think that that has been necessarily the understanding until now. And, and, and I think that's a, an incredible insight which has to be taken into, into account. Um, as we're speaking, we're joined by uh, um, Admiral Reserves uh, 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 Marom. Um, Admiral Marom, thank you for joining us um, and for taking the time uh, um, to, uh, um, to be with us, even from the road. Please drive carefully. Um, we are looking forward to, to hearing uh, uh, your comments. Um, I have to uh, uh, give a, a, um, a little bit of a, a, an update on that front. Um, I know Admiral Marom now for many, many years. Um, I was uh, um, uh, in charge of the head of the, the, the legal advice to the, uh, the Navy um, when Admiral, Admiral Marom was, uh, uh, was head of the, uh, the, the Navy. And uh, uh, we worked a lot together. And so uh, um, I cannot but uh, admire uh, Admiral Marom for both his, his courage, his insights, and uh, uh, really his uh, determination to get the job done and to make sure that, uh, uh, um, that, that, that it all, on all fronts possible under, under his uh, 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 purveyance, um, Israel is, is fighting the war. So what we wanted to discuss with you, uh, if we could, uh, Admiral Marom, is the involvement of the of of the navy in the war with Gaza, um, specifically from I mean we've seen the 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 the, the Hamas, uh, um, uh, um, they they have this uh, uh, um, maritime unit, uh, um, both uh, uh, torpedoes that we saw them uh, uh, trying to uh, claim that they have, and uh, uh, and and even a a commando uh, 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 a seals unit that they claim to have, and we've seen sometimes. Um, those seals coming in uh, um, from Gaza into uh, Ezekim and the area around there. Um, and we've seen that the Hamas even trying to shoot uh, rockets at, uh, at the gas platforms in uh, the Mediterranean. Um, give us a little bit of a description on, on, on what's going on on that front, the Israeli IDF uh, and, and, and Navy um, activities to thwart that. And then maybe with your permission, we can extend it also out to, to also the Red Sea and, and what's going on there. Because that, um, yeah. that's also a fundamental part of the conversation. Absolutely. So, uh, first of all, we are speaking about uh, several missions of the Israeli Navy. The first one, as uh, you can understand, uh, and as you said, is defending all the interests of Israel at sea and, of course, the shores of Israel. And on the 7th of October, when the Hamas started its uh, operation, the Israeli Navy uh, boats that were patrol boats that were in the north side of, of Gaza succeeded to shoot and hit some of the uh, boats that uh, tried to reach the, the, the shores of Israel near Zikim, which is the very south uh, kibbutz and have access to the sea. And uh, some terrorists succeeded to land on the shores of, of, of Zikim and uh, unfortunately he killed them on the, shore, on the beach. At, at that time, there were some uh, people there at the beach and they killed uh, 19 people. So uh, on one hand, there is a big success because there were supposed to be about 50 those that tried to land on the, on the beach. And at the end, uh, there were just a few that succeeded to land, but uh, they did the, 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 uh, the shooting and they killed innocent people that were just on the beach and did nothing besides uh, swimming and enjoying uh, the weather, the good weather. Uh, so this one of the Navy mission. The second part of the Navy mission is, as you said, uh, defending all the exclusive economic zone uh, sets that Israel has in the exclusive economic zone. And uh, some of them, of course, the, the, the gas platforms. Uh, this is done on a day-by-day -day basis, but it's now it is now enhanced because of the, the, the war and the situation between us and, and, and uh, uh, 
בחמאס אין חיזבאללה. We're having a little bit of a, a, a problem uh, hearing you, uh, uh, Admiral Morov. Um, so, so in, in I, the, I'll, 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 just, I'll just explain to our audience, uh, um, Israel, uh, 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 the exclusive economic zone okay. that Admiral Morov is talking about is the area in the sea that uh, is given to each country to exclusively uh, exploit the, uh, the, the, natural reserve, the natural resources there. Um, It has different areas. Uh, it, it is technically up to 200 miles uh, um, from the coast, um, but uh, uh, obviously in the Mediterranean with our proximity also to Cyprus. Um, there was a discussions also with Lebanon, which maybe we'll get into a little bit later on uh, um, with, uh, with Admiral Morom. And also obviously with Egypt, we have some type of a, 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 a joining there. So, so that's the, the area that we're talking about. We're talking about an area which has Uh, and not a small amount of complications to defend. It's open seas. Um, there is no restrictions on, uh, um, on, on maritime traffic there. And yet Israel has um, really very substantial strategic uh, um, assets there that need to be defended uh, um, by, uh, um, by the Israeli Navy. And Marob, Marob, maybe we can get back to you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So the second mission that is very, very important is the mission of uh, supporting the ground forces. Now, during the years, uh, Israel, and I mean not only the Navy, the Air Force, the Navy, and the ground forces, uh, built a, a force that has a superiority, first of all, in mental, secondly, in technology, and third, in uh, intelligence, and of course, a bunch of them, capabilities of uh, those uh, three forces, Army, Navy, and Air Force. Besides that, uh, there was a fantastic buildup of uh, control systems that are today combined. It's, it's, it's amazing when a pilot at the air flies and you can see the same picture like the ship at sea and the, 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 the commander in the vessel field. You see the same picture. Now, the Israeli Navy has today very, very accurate uh, uh, missiles on board of the different types of, of, of ships. And the ground forces are using the Navy coming from the West. For them, the way So sounds it depends which force uh, you are supporting and helping them to front so we're, at, we're unfortunately having a um, not a small amount of difficulty hearing you Admiral Marom uh, if I, 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 I may... I'm sorry about that I'm sorry I, I, I'm in a in my In my phone, it looks like I have very good received. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear it, but it just keeps on going in and out. I'll just, uh, um, just for our audience, uh, um, just to, uh, I'll just give a quick uh, uh, synopsis. What uh, Admiral Morom was describing was uh, the fact that over the last few of the years, there's been a, a tremendous amount of time, energy, and resources uh, invested in creating an, 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 an integrative uh, uh, um Uh, um, command and control center um, by which both the uh, Air Force, the Navy and the ground forces are able to see the same picture um, using uh, the different uh, uh, systems. And, and that, that gives really a tremendous uh, uh, um, strategic advantage that everyone has this integrated system. Um, the use of also special uh, um, uh, uh, armaments by the Navy also gives it really a tremendous advantage One of those uh, uh, events that you don't see often um, of, of, of missiles being launched from ships towards, uh, um, towards, the, uh, um, towards the land. Um, it's something that we're talking about really, a, a, a tremendous capability, which is a, a somewhat a, a, a unique, um, at least in, in Israeli terms, to the, uh, um, to the Israeli Navy, um, aside from obviously from the Air Force. 
and it, and it's a capability which uh, which uh, it really is a a, a a game changer at least uh, uh, for the navy and its involvement um in 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 the warfare let's see if uh, we can hear you again uh, uh, admiral maram you hear me yes you hear me now voice yes in and out unfortunately okay i'll try to stop somewhere and uh, maybe you'll hear me better but uh uh this is what I have. <laughs> I'm we, un sorry. We, we, un we understand that uh, uh, um, for people like yourself, there's there's no day, there's no night, and there's no stopping. Um, yeah. Just grateful that you could uh, uh, join us. Am I am I in a, in a good place now? Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm I've stopped, and let's try and, and go to to a next question if 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 you'd like. Fantastic. Uh, uh, um. So so as part of the 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 uh, um. Uh, the reports that we've seen, we did hear about the, um, this uh, um, uh, uh, Hamas unit um, with uh, uh, torpedo capabilities and uh, and 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 really and and then firing and trying to attack um, the 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 uh, the gas installations in 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 the Mediterranean. Do, to, to the best of your understanding, do they really have the capabilities to reach uh, uh, the gas platforms? Do they have those capabilities to disrupt really that? strategic Israeli asset? I will be very careful because uh, I don't want to expose most things that are uh, confidential, but I would say that uh, Hamas is a threat not only to the close shores of Gaza and not only to the uh, patrol boats that are patrolling uh, very close to the shores of Gaza, it has also capabilities that are uh, capable to uh, shoot, hit, and so on in Israel and its assets at sea uh, in different uh, and long range. Uh, and, and they are capable to do so. But I don't want to go into details and your question about torpedoes and so on. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I can't expose exactly what I know, but uh, it's not far-fetched. You're not speaking about something that is uh, uh, an imaginary or anything like that. I mean, we, we, we've seen that this terrorist organization does have very, uh, um, very well-developed uh, um, capabilities. Again, these are reports that I've seen on, 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 on open source. Uh, um, uh, we call it open source intelligence. Um, yes, exactly, yes. because it is that it's open source intelligence. It's gathering uh, um, information about the capabilities of the enemy via open sources that you can then reuse and uh, their ability to, uh, um, uh, to to explain that position better, even using those sources. Just uh, um, on our northern front, just uh, as, as a reminder, albeit a very painful reminder, in, uh, in the 2006 uh, um, war with, uh, with Lebanon, um, and with Hezbollah, we saw Hezbollah using a UAV and attacking an Israeli uh, uh, um, an Israeli uh, uh, warship um, and causing not a small amount of damage. And then also just uh, uh, just over a year ago, um, when the discussions were going on between Israel, America, and America and Lebanon, Hezbollah about uh, developing the, the the northern area gas fields, Karish, and uh, um, and, and and further north. Um, and exactly where uh, um, the, the the divide would be between Israel's exclusive economic zone and Lebanon's exclusive economic zone, um, we also saw then threats by Hezbollah and uh, and and also the use of drones um, in order to uh, uh, um, really using violence as a way to uh, uh, achieve their means. Um, that's something that we've seen, and so I assume we can we can again also uh, uh, um, assume that that Hamas has those, those terror capabilities? Absolutely, yes. Hamas is being supported heavily by Iran. And uh, we, not surprisingly, we had good intelligence. We found very high uh, technological capabilities uh, with Hamas. They have engineers, and they have today uh, quite nice products that they produced by themselves. They, of course, uh, got the technology from uh, Iran, 
but the the products uh, that uh, Hamas has, and we saw it uh, during this war. But we had good intelligence even before. Uh, very very uh, interesting, and I I would never underestimate them. We must be very very careful. We must understand that Hamas actually is not only a terrorist organization. It's an armed organization with very, very high capability. And we must understand that once we are confronting them, and I think the IDF, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army understand that very, very well. I think I think that's one of the uh, really one of the critical aspects here, not to under underestimate uh, the enemy. They have uh, um, substantial capabilities. Again, on based on those same open source uh, reports, we saw uh, um, reports of even Iranian uh, uh, um, revolutionary guard uh, uh, um, officers um, coming and reporting that they had been in the Gaza Strip and they had been uh, uh, assisting into uh, in the developing of. Uh, um, the uh, um, the rocket capabilities. So I think that's something that that we really do uh, have to take into account. Um, a few words, uh, if you could, uh, uh, Admiral Marom, about the, the the Red Sea. What's going yeah. on with the Houthis, um, the pirate, uh, uh, the piracy that we're seeing there, the threat to uh, um, to to the shipping lanes there. Just as a, a as a background um, for our audience, already it, it, it's commonly believed that the that the Six Day War in 1967 started on, on, on the 5th of June. It actually didn't. It actually started on the 1st of March, 1957, 10 years earlier, when Golda Meir stood up in uh, the UN and, uh, and, and, and declared for the world, any time the Straits of Tehran uh, um, are closed uh, um, to Israeli shipping and there is a blockage of access to our southern uh, uh, port in Elat, Israel will see that as... Uh, uh, um, as a casus belli, as a reason to go to war. Um, that we'd seen, the declaration was given after the Sinai campaign uh, um, in 1956 and as part of the, the Israeli uh, retreat from the Sinai. And then obviously it led into 1967 when uh, that same area was then closed again by Nasser mm -hmm. in the build-up to the, 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 the Six-Day War. So so really what we're seeing by the, the, the Houthis here is, is, is almost a, a declaration of war. One more point just to adjust the history. When we withdraw from Sinai after the Sinai campaign, uh, 1957, uh, the Americans promised us that if there will be any blockade of straits to Elat, the Americans will arrange a big uh, international flotilla that will break this... Uh, uh, siege or whatever they never did it uh, and that's the reason this is one of the reasons why we went to the six-day war let's speak about the houthis the houthis are a proxy of of iran they are they're in in yemen and they declared war on israel we did not declare war on them we don't have anything to do with uh houthis in yemen that are two thousand kilometers south of the southern part of israel and they started uh, firing missiles uh, drones, missiles, uh, uh, and uh, ballistic missiles uh, towards Israel. Uh, Israel has a very good uh, anti-missile uh, system, and uh, most of or all of them were uh, intercepted by Israel's uh, systems and by uh, the American Navy. Uh, ships. One of them is the Carney, that probably shot down about, uh, I think, between 15 to 20 drones and some uh, cruise missiles. I, I think about three. So altogether, it goes to something like more than 20 uh, uh, assets that were shot towards Israel, and all of them were, were uh, uh, intercepted. <laughs> Later on, the Houthis they understood that. Uh, about uh, against Israel, it's very, very difficult to fire missiles because uh, Israel's defense system is, is very, very good. So they started threatening uh, uh, the, the, the ships 
that somehow are related to Israel. I need to explain that uh, Israel has a very small merchant uh, merchant fleet, and uh, some Israelis in the past that are not living in Israel for years, and the companies are registered uh, different countries like Singapore and uh, um, the UK. They are operating uh, some companies of uh, merchant uh, ships, and uh, the truth is, they uh, it's very easy to go into the data and find out who is the owner and who is the operator of, of the ships. And they uh, boarded by helicopters one of the ships that is operated by a Japanese company, but is owned somewhere in the back by an Israeli by the name of Rami Unger. His company is, is, is registered in, in the UK. Ryan is the name of the company. And then they shot uh, here and there on ships. They tried to uh, uh, abduct the ship that's called Central Park, which is a chemical uh, tanker. And uh, the U.S. Uh, Navy, this was in the, 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 the vicinity of, of uh, Aden. Uh, and uh, uh, an American uh, ship that is in a force that's called CTF-151 that is part of the international forces that are protecting ships from pirates. And a Japanese ship, both of them uh, succeeded to <clears throat> board the ship and, and take over. Uh, the ship back, uh, and the ship today is released and, 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 and is sailing somewhere in the high seas. Uh, what happened after that is that ships that are uh, somehow registered and related to Israel, doesn't matter which kind of companies and so on, and one of the companies is Sim Lines, that is an Israeli company, all of them decided to change course and once they come from the east, from Asia Pacific, they will not come through the Red Sea and the Suez Canal to Israel and to Europe. And they are going to go all around Africa. This is a long, long, long uh, uh, tour that the uh, uh, largest, the, 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 the uh, the time in about three weeks is uh, uh, an addition of about 11,000 miles when you add uh, the the, the uh, goods through around Africa. You can imagine what will happen and how will this affect the, the, the prices of uh, maritime transportation and what will happen uh, to the prices here in Israel, but not in Israel, also in Europe. Some of the countries in Europe the prices will raise uh, in a big amount. And the second thing is the disruption of all the network of those ships that are supposed to go from one port to another, collect and, and, and leave some containers here and there. And then at the end of the day, arrive to Europe and then go back to the East because most of the products are done in the East and bring them back to the West, to Israel and, 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 and to Europe. This <clears throat> will not be accepted by international community. The international community need to say, stop. This cannot happen. Uh, the free uh, navigation at sea has to be kept and this understood by all the countries for many, many, many years. I won't go into it. So the international uh, community will respond just like responded against the pirates in uh, Somalia. I'm sure they're going to respond, but this will take time. Countries, it takes time. What you're describing, to... Admiral Morom, is, is, is Israeli is a tremendous uh, um, is a tremendous onus also on on the really on the whole shipping world, but specifically on Israel. And 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 Absolutely. is that something that you see that uh, as you mentioned, uh, uh, um, possibly uh, uh, when you when you mo when you spoke about this uh, uh, um, initially, uh, do you see the Americans? not only patrolling that area or, or, or showing that presence there, but actually mm -hmm. taking offensive actions against the, Hout the Houthis? Sometimes they'll do so. Uh, but I, you must, uh, we must understand that as big as America is, at the end of the day, 
they have a certain number of ships and they're using them in different areas of the world. But Israel has the capability to strike the Houthis and to protect its ships. And until the international community will succeed to respond and build another uh, combined task force, and it has a number, it's 154, 53, but it's not active. And of course, the first partner that we, we will have here is the United States, but the second one is Egypt, because they are going to suffer from lack of, of ships crossing the, the Suez Canal. And, and, and of course, you understand that this will harm the, 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 the economy of, 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 of Egypt. And therefore, I see, first of all, Israel operating. Israel has the possibility and the capability to protect its shipping and uh, bring safe ships from Mamel uh, Mandeb uh, Straits to Elat and to the Suez Canal and to Haifa and, uh, and Ashdod. And Israel only needs to decide to do so. That, and that I that decide. Point, point out, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Admiral Morom, 98% of Israel's imports come via the sea, right? Absolutely, yes. Yes. It's, and I think that Israel, it's time that the government of Israel, the war cabinet, and so on, will decide and give an order to the IDF. Okay, we want to open the, the, the once again, the sea lines of communication between uh, Bab el Mandeb Straits and uh, the Israeli ports. Go and take action. And now the Israeli, I promise you, that the Israeli Defense Force and the Navy has the possibility to do it, has the capability to do it. Would that be something that which would also be coordinated? We've seen a, a, um, the American Navy um, really send to the area two f entire fleets of of of, of air force of, of airplane carriers. Um, this could be done as part of, like you said, that that international um, organization, uh, a coalition of forces there to make sure that um, that they keep, first of all uh, and foremost, the, the promise of freedom of navigation on the seas, um, which I think it has to be a fundamental for everyone. Absolutely. It could be done, and I'm sure that it will be done, but until we organize and the world rolls it out and starts building the, 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 the uh, combined forces, Israel has to act and has to tell the Houthis, we are going to protect uh, our sea lines of communication and we are not going to allow you to stop Israeli ships. We can do it. So we've seen not a small amount of reticence of the Israeli cabinet and of the Israeli government. Um, many would argue uh, uh, correctly from opening a second front, rather staying focused only on Gaza and ignore, almost ignoring or, or at least not responding in a with full force to the threats coming from from Lebanon and and from Hezbollah. Do you think there's any difference on that front regarding uh, uh, um, the Houthis because of this threat? Lebanon, at the end of the day, isn't threatening our uh, uh, um, our, our maritime lanes, isn't threatening uh, the the passage of goods, and and but the Houthis really are. So, would you suggest that there would be some type of differentiation, even in that uh, idea of not opening a second front between Hezbollah on the one hand and, and the Houthis on the other. Yes, first of all, I agree that we need to focus on Gaza. And I agree that second priority is Hezbollah. And as long as Hezbollah is not going to an all-out war, we need to keep the confrontation in, in low level as it is today. But a different story is the Houthis. We don't need ground forces in the, to confront the Houthis. And it will not disrupt anything in the focus of the IDF on Gaza. The focus on IDF have to continue of the IDF on Gaza has to continue. And I think this is the right decision, and I agree with this decision. But <clears throat> operating close to the Yemen shores and hitting targets of, of the Houthis so that they will not be able to stop any ship and to disrupt 
the sea lines of communication between uh, Asia Pacific and Israel and Europe, <laughs> I'm sorry, in my understanding, we can do it. And it will not disrupt the focus on Gaza. Because that's something we can do from, from, from afar um, rather than anything else. Um, can we, can we, with your permission, go back for for a second to uh, um, to Lebanon and the 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 the, the idea of uh, of what was achieved last year of the agreement between Israel and America, America and uh, and Lebanon regarding the yes. demarcation of um, our uh, exclusive economic zones, and also that brings us into the subject of of Qatar as as now the operator of. Uh, um, the, the 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 or the developer of the gas field off the Lebanese coast, and really we've seen Qatar playing a massive, really a massive role in this war, with a prior to the war funding constantly Hamas with thirty million dollars a, a month on the one hand, and yet at the oh. same time Israel now uh, um, happily including Hamas uh, and and Qatar in the discussions with Hamas um, for the release of. Of, of the hostages. Tell us a little bit about Qatar, its development of the gas, Lebanon, and the importance of that gas field for Lebanon. Yeah. First of all, we need to understand Qatar is an enemy. Qatar is supporting and funding the Hamas. And I'm sorry that um, some countries pushed Israel to uh, agree that Hamas will be the mediator between Israel and Hamas. Hamas is, Hamas is not a mediator. Qatar. Hamas, Hamas is a country that represents the Hamas. And they are uh, speaking from the throat of Hamas. The real mediator that should be here is Egypt. And Egypt has also the capability to uh, leverage uh, force on 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 Hamas, and to do things that uh, Israel can't do, and I think that the, the 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 fair mediator here should be Egypt. Now about the fields between Israel and Lebanon. Oh, this is a big uh, argument, and I won't go into this argument because it's a political argument. But I would say so. In principle. Uh, Lebanon is in a very, very bad situation when we speak about uh, ener en energy and energy independence. Today, Lebanon is dependent on uh, oil that comes through Hezbollah and comes actually from Iran to Lebanon. Now, how can we cut this chain of dependence of Lebanon on Hezbollah and, and, and Iran. The only way to do so is to give Lebanon uh, some independent capabilities like this field that right now one of the drills was dry in that field that is north of, of, of Karish. But most of the geologists would say that uh, this field has gas in, and we need to find, it's called the Kana uh, field, and we need to find uh, the gas in this field and the exploration probably will take some more time, but there will be some more drills there. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. I don't care if Qatar will be the one that will drill and will find the, 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 the gas and, and at the end of the day will lay the uh, pipes that will go to uh, Beirut or somewhere between uh, Beirut and Tyre and, 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 and bring in gas to uh, Lebanon. As long as Lebanon, at the end of the day, will be independent uh, in uh, energy means. I want Lebanon to be independent in, uh, in uh, energy because when you have a neighbor that is in trouble, you are going to be in trouble as well. And that's the reason why I'm doing so. And, and I, I think that this is a good idea. And I think that if this will happen... Uh, Hezbollah will go weaker and weaker. Uh, and I hope that uh, they will find gas there. And really, I don't care if, if Qatar will do it or any other international uh, uh, company will do it. 
That's a, 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 a tremendous uh, insight, uh, uh, Admiral Morom. Um, I know that we, we, we've discussed this subject of, of Lebanon and, and that demarcation yeah. and, and the gas fields um, before. Um, and, 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 and really, it's, it's important to, to hear all of the different sides of the argument in order that we can, we can understand what's going on. Um, we, we, the, the, the final question that I have for you is, is less about Israel. It's a, a, um, from one of our, our, our viewers who's asking about the, what, what happens when the Houthis actually endanger the U.S. forces? Because they haven't only been attacking Israel. They only haven't only been uh, uh, um, uh, preventing the, 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 uh, the, the, the free, uh, freedom of movement on the seas. They, they've actually been actively engaging, if not attacking, the American forces. Do you think even then the Americans will refrain from defending themselves against that threat um, just because it also involves us? Or do you think the Americans will will really see uh, um, that as a threat to themselves and uh, and 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 take all all mo all measures necessary in order to uh, uh, um, get rid of that threat? You know, boys, I never estimate any of my uh, opponents, and who is our threat? But I don't think they're a threat. For the Israeli, for the American, uh, for the U.S. Navy, just that operating offshore uh, Yemen in the Red Sea, and I think that they have all the capability to defend themselves, and therefore I don't see the United States in a year of elections. We are going into a year of elections. I think the twenty-fourth of January is the day of the opening of the campaign or whatever. Uh, going and, and confronting uh, the Houthis in, in Yemen. Who knows in... in, in uh, what will happen after that? The States. Who are the Houthis? Who knows in the United States where is Yemen? And who cares about Yemen? <laughs> the people care about different other issues. And therefore, I think that the American forces are safe. I think they know how to protect themselves and they have all the capability to do so. And uh, I don't see America involved here. I see Israel involved here, yes. I think that Israel needs to be involved here in protecting the, the, the sea lines of communication to Israel. And Israel has the capability to do so. I don't uh, depend on America that it will uh, solve our problems. We have the force and we have the capability and once we have the support of the United States, we will fight for our sovereignty. Admiral Morom, uh, uh, maybe on that note, we can uh, thank you and allow you to, to continue on with your important business. Um, really, it's been a, a pleasure discussing with you. Um, and thank you for taking the time. We apologize that we held you up even at the side <laughs> of the road. Um, please uh, uh, keep you. safe. Pleasure for me as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. And uh, uh, um, and and to all of our viewers, uh, Pinchas, uh, um, uh, closing remarks on 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 really the the phenomenal insights of 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 Admiral Marom and uh, and and really how we see this wider picture of geopolitics, whether it be Qatar's involvement, whether it be going into a, a year of uh, American elections, um, all of these different factors that need to be taken into account. How uh, um, how the economy in in Lebanon could possibly be seen as a as a restraining force against Hezbollah, um, really uh, uh, um, uh, 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 looking at everything from, from a bird's, uh, bird's eye's view, uh, um, 35,000 kilometers up, we have to look down and see well, where do all of these puzzle pieces fit in into their place? Yes, I follow the, the news from Lebanon, and I am getting the impression that the Lebanese public opinion is uh, panicked now uh, for the possibility that uh, Israel will attack Lebanon. And uh, they say that, okay, uh, we, got a, a, we, we got a big blow uh, in the past rounds, but uh, still we were a state with uh, capabilities. Now we are uh, already ruined economically and uh, uh, all the, uh, everything that uh, uh, in our infrastructures. 
and uh, we, we don't know if we can survive another blow. This is what this this what I can see in the in the chatting rooms and uh, in the tweets and uh, the Facebook. Uh, the way that the ordinary Lebanese are talking between them, and this is also the discourse uh, among uh, the politicians. And uh, you see that uh, Hezbollah, once there was a ceasefire uh, between Israel and Hamas, Hezbollah volunteered to make a ceasefire by its own decision, okay? Uh, they jump on opportunity, okay, to seize uh, to to seize the the pressures. These are pressures in in Lebanon, and uh, and uh, and I fully agree about the issue of the of the Israeli true interest that Lebanon will find a natural gas a, a seashore. Uh, this is an Israeli interest, and uh, and I also agree with what he said about uh, Qatar. Uh, the Israeli decision uh, to, to 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 crown Qatar as the king of uh, Gaza, in my opinion, uh, uh, was a mistake. And uh, I know from uh, Egyptian uh, friends long ago that they were uh, astonished about why Israel is uh, preferring Qatar on us. And I told them uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, Qatar has its uh, better possibilities financially because they can uh, 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 enter Gaza and uh, this money to influence politics inside, etc. I was thinking in terms of uh, internal politics, not uh, in terms of uh, supporting uh, terror and helping Israel, ceasefire, things like this. Uh, and secondly, I said that it is a big achievement for Israel that a Gulf country like uh, Qatar is coming closer to Israel. It's uh, uh, actually, we have uh, actually actual embassies, okay? Not formal, but actual. And, uh, but I was naive, I was naive. And, uh, and also we didn't have uh, at the time uh, the option of having uh, the Gulf with us and Saudi Arabia, etc. Now we have the Gulf and Saudi Arabia, uh, which are better options and we have to prefer them. And there is a development now that it's not talking about, but I think it's extremely important that both the Emirates and Saudi Arabia, with the help of Egypt, so Egypt entered a, a southern Gaza to provide a, a aid and a field hospitals. And it is for the first time that they did not ask the agreement uh, the acceptance of Hamas. They entered southern Gaza independently, ignoring Hamas. And I think that this is a good signal uh, for the future, that uh, if we want a true friend to help us uh, on the day after the war, I think that it is exactly what we need, the Emirates and Saudi Arabia. And uh, those are, uh, together with Egypt, those are the those are the better partners for us for the day after uh, Hamas. Hopefully we shall eradicate Hamas. Um, Pinchas, uh, thank you very much. I think that, that re really that subject of the day after, who do we choose as our, as our partners in those efforts to, to really to, uh, um, to change the face of Gaza to ensure that on the one hand, Hamas is eradicated. On the other hand, that we can then continue on with a population that never again poses a threat to Israel. That's something that uh, um, obviously we have to get into in much more detail. It's something that that, that obviously we are uh, uh, um, considering, and 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 there is thought going on on that process. Um, but that's something that we will discuss at another time. Pinchas, uh, thank you for joining us. 
Um, and thank you for our, uh, our viewers also joining us again today. Um, we will see you again on Sunday. Um, no program tomorrow, Friday. Um, Shabbat comes in early. So we will see you again on Sunday. Keep safe, everyone. And uh, have a good day. Good evening. Good afternoon. Um, 